Hello and welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 1st of November 2022. Now yesterday we were looking at this report here, uh, basically from a committee of the American Senate. And this is basically saying that the, uh, the virus probably had a lab leak origin. But we also noted yesterday that this was saying that the pandemic in China probably began quite a lot earlier than we thought. And they were saying October, mid-October to end of October, early November. But there's really quite severe question marks over this. Now, I know this doesn't really amount to, uh, to research as such, but I've had hundreds, in fact, probably a, a, o, o, over the last year or two, thousands of people, thousands of you have uh, written in and emailed and commented that you were ill at the end of uh, 2019. For, for example, people in the UK, people in the United States, where officially the virus hadn't reached them yet. Now, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. This one is from Andy. Now, I'm not going to give his second name because I haven't got full permission, but he has posted this in the comments. So, and again, this is typical of many I've been getting. My wife and I were in Wuhan in late September 2019 for three days. Our tour guides were ill, saying it was the worst flu they'd ever seen. My wife became very ill and could hardly breathe. She was taken to hospital. Now, this is September 19. Now, this sounds COVID-ish when officially there was no COVID. On returning to Australia, she became ill again and we called an ambulance. She had major inflammation of the chest. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? She was a healthy dan dance instructor with no underlying health conditions. And Andy thinks this virus was cir circulating in July, August 2019, based on the accounts of people we met over there. So pretty interesting, Andy, and thank you very much for that. And I'm, I might give you some more examples later on, but let's look at some more data first. Now, this is uh, the Senator Richard Burr report on viral origins that we looked at yesterday, which is, is this one. Now, um, section three of this report, I'm not going to show you all on the uh, page, but uh, you can check out the reference. Section three of this report uh, is here. Report on viral origins. Now, um, quite interesting, really. Uh, China's early COVID-19 vaccine development versus the US Operation Warp Speed. Now, what Senator Byrne and his groupings are saying here is that China developed a couple of vaccines spookily quickly, really, really quickly. And is there significance to this? Well, let's look at the reasoning. So, um, section three of the report, read it for yourself. Warp speed, of course, the United States government threw basically billions of dollars, basically unlimited, wasn't it? You know, this was the United States going flat out. And uh, when the United States goes flat out on a research project, it goes flat out um, with its uh, Im impressive uh, capacities to do that. Now, the full genetic sequencing of the SARS coronavirus 2 virus was first posted globally on a database on the 11th of January, and the timeline here is important, 11th of January 2020. It's a Chinese professor who violated government restrictions and was later severely sanctioned. Now, the question in my mind is, if this professor hadn't leaked the uh, viral genome, how much longer would it have taken the Chinese authorities to release it to the world? We don't really know that. I mean, shortly after that, they came clean and came official because they had no choice. But um, anyway, so, so that's the 11th of January 2022. Then vaccine developers inserted viral genome into cells to produce viral proteins. So once they knew the sequence, they could put together these sequences of the ribonucleic acid, put them into cells, persuade the cells to then make the proteins. And from the proteins, the proteins that the cells made would be the same as the proteins in the uh, SARS coronavirus 2. And they could then develop the vaccines. Uh, but to do that, they had to be uh, preclinical animal toxicity, safety and efficacy studies. Then, of course, there had to be um, human clinical safety and efficacy trials um, and then commercial scale production. Now, normally all of these things uh, are done sequentially. But of course, in the case of the vaccine, they were all done uh, at the same time. Uh, perhaps we would... Uh, 
want to critique that at some stage, but not on this video. But they were basically done on the same time. Because we remember that uh, vaccines have been manufactured in large amounts, for example, before the authorizations were given uh, because of the emergency nature of the situation at the time. So there's these stages and they take time. Now, even though they were done together, uh, they still take time to do. Now, um, Operation Warp Speed. Uh, Pre-Operation Warp Speed uh, work started on the 11th of January in the United States and the United Kingdom and all over the world, basically. The work started as soon as the viral sequence was known. Now, if we take the adenovirus vector vaccines, that's the Oxford AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson. Uh, Oxford AstraZeneca went from sequencing to phase one clinical trials in 103 days. Johnson & Johnson, it took 185 now, the reason it was only 103 days in the case of the um, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is they'd already developed the adenovirus vector platform to a very high degree of sophistication to make vaccines against Ebola. So they really hit the ground running. But then if we look at the three adenovirus vector vaccines that are under development, this is the Johnson & Johnson one here. And that reached phase one trials on the 15th of uh, July. So 15th of July 2020, of course, for that. Oxford AstraZeneca, um, 103 days, 23rd of April. But the Chinese adenovirus vector vaccine, uh, it only took uh, 61 days to develop. It was a lot, lot quicker. So the Chinese adenovirus vector. Now, were the Chinese able to skip some scientific stages that uh, we weren't in Western countries? Hard to see, really. Um, but they got there very, very quickly, as we see in the graphic here. So that, that, that's, that's it there. They got in way quicker than anyone else. 18th of March. So 67 days for the Chinese there. 103 days for the Oxford AstraZeneca. And uh, 185 days for the um, Johnson & Johnson. Very quick. Now, the Pfizer is slightly different because once you've got the genome for the virus, you can encode that into RNA and, and basically make the Pfizer vaccine instantly um, or, or the Moderna vaccine, the mRNA vaccines. Now, the Chinese didn't work on the mRNA vaccines. That's why I think the, uh, the, the Senate uh, grouping correctly uh, took this as, as, a fair, as a fair comparison. I believe that is a fair uh, comparison, but just out of interest. The, uh, the Pfizer vaccine, uh, the trials actually started, well, officially it was the 7th of May, I think. They'd actually done some a few trials in Germany a few days before that. So basically it was May. So the Pfizer vaccine started, say, early May, about there. Um, so that will be the beginning of trials with the Pfizer vaccine. So again, we see that... Um, the Chinese one was way faster. The Oxford AstraZeneca one was faster than the Pfizer, as we know, because they'd already had the platform, but the Johnson & Johnson was way slower. And this is the mRNA vaccines. Of course, we know that these are quicker because you can just synthesize them basically instantly. So really quite quick. Now, another Chinese vaccine um, was actually patented on the 24th of February 2020, apparently, it's staggeringly quickly. Now, this one wasn't followed on to trial, but it was uh, another Chinese vaccine that basically was produced in, in what, six weeks. <clears throat> that was the one by this Brigadier General from the Academy of the Military, Academy of the Military Medical Sciences in China. Uh, so it wasn't carried on, but how the heck did they do it that quickly is Senator Burr's uh, question. So the questions are, did the Chinese researchers have access to genome sequence before... Uh, January the 11th, 2020. Well, given that it was leaked then, I think the answer to that's got to be yes. Uh, so uh, how far in advance, because they had to have it to leak it, obviously. And how far in advance of uh, that time frame? Of course, we don't know. Was it days, weeks, months? We simply don't know. Now, that's the state side of the pond Let, let's uh, look at a, a video clip now from the um for, from the other side of the ocean uh, from europe and this is this is a member of european parliament christian teres who's going to speaking at a press conference a couple of weeks back so let's listen to this sure. 
A year ago, I requested Emma to submit some details and data to me because I wanted to have an informed decision, I would say, when I voted in favor or against the Green Certificate. And one of the questions that I asked Emma is to send me the, all the trials, the tests, the clinical trials that all these medical companies had done either in animals or in humans, before they requested the marketing authorization. So in the case of Pfizer, here's something interesting. Comirnaty. When they submitted the information and the clinical trials to Pfizer, here's all the tests that they submitted along with the request. They submitted a clinical trial that started in January 14th, 2020. I asked yesterday the representative of Pfizer and she declined to answer. How is it possible that we, the world, found out in December of 2019 that there is a COVID or coronavirus as it's called in China, December of 2019. On January the 11th, the Chinese government released the DNA data or a segment of it, to the public, and three days later, Pfizer already started the tests for this vaccine. How is that possible? She did not answer. In the case of Moderna, and I've asked the CEO of Moderna two, three weeks ago when he was here, they submitted trials since 2017. So I'm restating the question, how is it possible that when we found out in the fall of December, or December, in the winter of 2019 about this virus, they submitted tests of their vaccines years before we found out about the virus. And I'm still asking that question now. How is that possible? So these are the legit questions that we all asked and that people are asking us. And unfortunately, they are declining to answer. So this was the, these were the the main topics, I would say, that we tried to clarify yesterday, and unfortunately, the Pfizer representative, as Moderna representative, you know, declined to answer. We will keep pushing uh, to clarify these facts, and nevertheless, to make sure that the European Commission is going to fully release the content of these contracts. Thank you. And I would like to give the floor now. So, really, quite, quite poignant questions there why aren't Pfizer and Moderna as answering these questions from a, a legitimate representative uh, group of representatives uh, members of the European Parliament now um, so th that was Mr Christian Terez now it says in the case of Pfizer submitted a clinical trial that started on the 14th of January so that's three days three days later so from that we can see that Pfizer was pretty quick off the mark and when Pfizer were asked by Mr Terrace why it was so quick how it could be so quick they didn't answer according to Mr Terrace's statement so pretty quick off the mark didn't say how they would be so quick off the mark uh, Moderna um, mod mod modified uh, RNA Modi that's where the term Moderna comes from, modified RNA, um, Moderna. Trial in 2017. Now, what is going on here? Now, this is slightly more ambiguous than the uh, Pfizer one. But what really sticks in my mind is why Moderna wouldn't ask Mr. answer Mr. Terraz's questions, which are legitimate questions. Anyway, what, what they're talking about here is there's various uh, references there that you can look at. That's the Moderna website. And uh, I think this, the, these two are links to the, uh, the patent that's under question. And this is the patent in question here. Now, this patent, uh, and correctly, uh, March 7th, 2017, uh, the actual virus, the SARS coronavirus 2 virus, which was subsequently identified on the 11th of... Uh, January 2020 the genome was published but before that these years before that um, they'd actually put in this patent uh, part of the spike protein um, uh, 19 
nucleotides of the Moderna genome. Now, these, these uh, nucleotides, as you know, are uh, A, C, G, and U. And basically what this patent did in 2017 was it had 19 of the sequences uh, in the correct order. Um, so, so that would be, for example, it could be an A, G, uh, A, C, U. Um, it's, it's, it's these sequences that go, these sequences. So it got 19 of those in the right order. Um, now, is that a coincidence is the question. Um, well, there's two possibilities here. Either it was a coincidence, pure coincidence, that they got 19 of these bases right, or, or, or it wasn't a coincidence. Now, if you look at this kind of mathematically, the chances of getting the first one right there is one chance in four. Uh, and then the chances of getting that one right is another one chance in four, and that's another one chance in four. And you multiply those together, and the odds of getting it right 19 times are tens of billions to one now i'm not really commenting on this either way um i don't really fully understand it to be quite honest how they would get 19 in the right sequence but quite a few eminent people say that they could have it by pure coincidence um th there you go that, that's basically all i know about it i think that's what mr teraz is is referring to as far as i am uh, aware um but it does look like, to me, um, one heck of a coincidence. Um, but it could just be that. It could be coincidence. But I would have thought it's a pretty big one. So I think that's what Mr. Terrors was basing his reasoning on in terms of, uh, in terms of Moderna. In terms of Pfizer, it's clear cut that the, the trial things was three days after. And when Mr. Taraz was talking about Emma there, uh, he wasn't talking about his secretary or his wife. It's European Medicines Agency, of course. So he put in a, official questions to Emma, the European Medicines Agency. Now I want to read you something from Tracy. Now listen, listen to this. This is really quite. This is really quite gripping. Um, now Tracy knows a man who, along with his wife, had COVID in late November. Um, or had symptoms in late November 2019 in San Diego, California, of course, United States. Now, remember, this is November 19, before the pandemic really officially started, even, well, officially, probably, yeah. I mean, it certainly wasn't in the United States then, officially. Anyway, their doctor was a friend. Uh, the, 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 their doctor was friends with a Navy doctor who said a virus was all over the nearby Naval Station too. So it looks like a lot of cases in um, November um, 2019 before the Wuhan virus, by the current chronology, could have reached uh, California. Now, this is, this is, this is, this is the, the key bit. After COVID had been announced... At the next doctor's appointment, the curious doctor ran antibody tests on the man to confirm what they'd had in November was indeed COVID-19. So the illness occurred in November 19, and then in uh, early 2020, it was found that the individual was antibody positive for the SARS coronavirus 2. Um, now, OK, these are anecdotes, but I've had hundreds of them. No, no over, over the last few years, several thousand, quite, quite a few thousand. Uh, Tamida, for example, also, also from the States, I think. Many of us knew something was wrong in 2019. I had absolutely the worst flu-like symptoms I've ever, ha ever had in my life back in November 2019. Again, November 2019. Symptoms that affected my heart and sent me to the ER once and a cardiologist twice. So... Literally thousands of you have had this bad illness. Now, why haven't these antibody studies been fully done? Um, it's too late now, of course. The antibodies will have, will have gone. And even if it was possible to do very sensitive tests for antibodies now, um, of course, people have been subsequently infected. Now, having said that, uh, to respond to Tamado, I mean, when you do have proper influenza, you are very, 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 very ill. Um, I had influenza. I had bad influenza in '92, I think it was '91, '92, and I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. Well, I was going to say I couldn't get out of bed, but there was one stage where I couldn't get into bed. I was lying on the bedroom floor groaning, 
it was just so ill um so you can be very ill so it's not not conclusive but very many of you had are convinced you had covid in late 19 in western countries which would mean uh, that quite potentially um as as um as andy said the the virus could have been circulating in july august based on people's accounts in wuhan so interesting uh, more to find out quite intriguing really and uh we need to know the history of this because this has got huge implications if it is the case that this virus was spreading in the united states in november 2019 and no one knew a thing about it just think of the implications if there had been a more serious virus with an even higher uh, mortality rate than we now know that it has keeping an eye on this one there's a big covid inquiry going on now in the uk it's run by the government so i'm not holding my breath um but there could be interesting things to come we're going to keep an eye on it and uh where would i put my money yeah i i think the virus was probably circulating in um july and august in china but that's just an opinion you have yours let me know what you think and thank you for watching